Welcome to All My Art and Soul. And this is going to be a 30-day art journaling practice, which is not a challenge, but an invitation to find a new positive path to ourselves, to our creativity. If you open yourself up so that art and soul journaling can be a source of renewed inspiration, stillness, clarity, peace, and even wisdom. Over the next 30 days, I will be uploading a daily affirmation video. So come and join me for 30 days of art and soul journaling. Hello again, and welcome back to Affirmation Art Journaling page. And today is affirmation number 23. A positive, creative energy flows through me. I create beauty and magic. A positive, creative energy flows through me. I create beauty and magic. And here are my colors. And I'm writing them down right away so I don't forget. So the first one uh, from the top to bottom is turquoise blue cadmium yellow deep hue, uh, the magenta, quinacridone magenta, raw umber was the brown, and of course the unbleached titanium. And I put down a little, uh, to use a little bit of the transparent mixing white. I don't think I do. I wish I did. Um, and you'll see on this page that it takes um, many different directions. My first intention, along with the affirmation, is to create an all-over composition instead of thirds or, um, and then I thought, okay, quadrants, you know, the four corners. So uh, those two sort of go through my mind, and as you can see, I selected some collage papers that I made from the uh, specifically for this color palette so they have the quinacridone and then I think what happens instead of letting it flow this is where the overthinking comes uh, I don't know so much it so much it was overthinking or just a decision that I made uh, in response it was just a quick decision I really like that neutral uh, piece of collage that I initially put in, and look how blue it is at first. I would, and, and writing notes in, you know, on that page where I put the affirmation, because you don't all, you don't remember, of course you don't remember, you know, you're, you're supposed to be creating, well, not supposed to be, there's no supposed to's here, but when you're creating all these layers, you don't always remember what you first started and it is there and it affects the rest of the layers. So as you can see, um, I could have went, this would have been a really good start just with a whole all blue monochromatic piece. As I add the magenta and a little bit of that yellow, um, which is the cadmium uh, yellow deep, um, then I get this green. So then I thought I'm just letting go and I'm playing. This is a great way to play with different uh, color palettes as well. Um, I have a specific, um, another journal, I've got journals for everything, uh, which I have a video, a series, I think it was three different videos that I made of exploring color. And I'll be getting right back to that after this. So look what happens. Just making having fun, not caring if they go or not. And then I'm getting into some shapes, organic shapes. Um, and forcing myself, really, to, not forcing, that's too harsh of a word, just pushing myself away from the color fields just for something different. Now, I really love my color fields, so I will be going back to those. But this is just a really fun piece and it's so different from the rest of the pages so stay to the end 
And don't forget, if you are really liking this uh, type of content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with a friend, and um, just keep coming back because we're at 23. We only have, uh, is this 23? Let's see. Yes, we only have seven more to go. So now I'm getting some really muddy, earthy colors going, especially when I look to the left, uh, which was the raw umber and the quinacridone magenta. So I've got an overall warmer, less blue. Remember it started out so blue, but I'm gonna remember that for the blue um, uh, underlayers if I wanna maintain a more monochromatic uh, piece. Simplifying your palette is another thing. You may, I next time I'm just going to exclude totally any kind of yellow and I'm just gonna stick with some earthy tones. The blues still haven't used my Payne's Gray in this combination, that's coming up. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. Uh, most likely it will be since I'm on a little bit of a roll with, with these colors. Then, so going and thinking, okay, these are all darks. Let's add some mid-tones. Just thinking shapes. I Naturally, that comes from me is rec rectilinear and uh, circular shapes. And, um, and these are the shapes that I, I make all the time. So the next thing that I want to try is exploring different shapes. Now the way I do it, um, I go to Pinterest, I've got some boards, uh, patterns, shapes, and I will go into all this art that I've collected and I, I use it as a learning process. And then, okay, why, does the, why do those shapes speak to me? What am I seeing? And then I'll record it. So, um, Again, if you are not following uh, Adele Sipenston, uh, she is incredible. She is an amazing teacher. And um, I sort of pick a little bit of my favorite things here and there from different artists and just sort of make it, in, it bring it into my own practice. What really resonates with me. And I know that I, you, you can't learn everything, but how I learn is that at when I need it, then I use it. So, for some reason, um, bringing in the light, lighter values now are now overpower overpowering or layering over all these darks. So next time, oh, I really like how I left that. Using and leaving enough darks, and maybe only layering over a certain area. You might want to consider that. And you've seen me use my prayer. That's the Catalyst Wedge. And I am ordering some color shapers. The color shapers, um, I hope I get them. Amazon only has a few left. And there's different ones. There's a set of four, which seems to be the most, um, they're, they're like 50 bucks Canadian. In the States, everything's cheaper. And uh, they're like, a, they look exactly like a paintbrush but it's a rubber end instead of bristles. And I've really been watching my favorite artists use them. And I think that's gonna be really useful, especially for my shapes. So thinking um, along the lines of the color wheel, um, really, I, I chose to put this warmer tone in because of the collage paper that I really loved and wanted to include in this piece. So that directed my colors. Seeing it now, um, I really would love to see a piece left in just these colors without any of the warm uh, mauves and purples and even add the Payne's gray, the raw umber and black. So uh, there's a darker sort of series that I'm uh, creating, uh, planning, and exploring. And uh, those are the colors I'm going to explore with. So then, playing with the raw umber, I know that scoring through can reveal more 
of what's underneath and that sort of looks cool. Loving the blue and the mauve. So I'm just adding some more. That may have been a little too light. So then I'm bringing down, bring, yeah, see? And, and making sure all the colors relate to each other. So that means mixing um, a little bit from each and maybe the raw umber with the, with the blue, raw umber with the, so everything has, uh, you know, there's, the, and, and the colors are way more interesting instead of straight out of the tube. So there's that one. Wow. And these papers, just lightly mixing on the jelly plate printer. And I use a combination of copy paper, newsprint paper, laser paper, and you get a different effect each time. Yes. So I always love to put, and that's what I was thinking. And I, it does look better. Well, it looked better higher up too. And then I could have done something else. Um, play with saturation, play with shape. What's an opposite of, of a rectangle? Well, some circle. And of course I use, I end up using some circles because I love, love that in my work. Um, so now we've got light, we've got different layers. Notice the blues and all those mauves. Before I went over it with the catalyst wedge, now they've become a back layer. So this is where playing um, is great because then it can just become a back layer. So I'm putting more sh thinking different shapes, but this is where I really need to go explore some different shapes. And then of course, scoring through again, reveal some of that underneath. As you add, without thinking, uh, lighter values. Uh, it doesn't matter what color they are because we're going by values right now. Uh, we're not really, uh, I'm not thinking saturation. These are just the colors that I chose. I'm thinking more light and dark. So now shapes are developing unintentionally. And then when you're, you know, you can spin out of, of that mode and then take a look. It's like, oh, okay. So now seeing that blue section in the middle, the lower sort of the mid middle uh, area, I may have wanted to extend some of that blue and go right to the edge or down, guiding the viewer's eye around, that kind of thing. Um, putting some darker value up in the upper left hand corner. So I like where that paper, yeah, just a little higher and just in getting away from those color fields. Yeah, so this, I really love the layering. So I'm gonna really take a note, write a note of how I started those layers, just random. And now <clears throat> I, I pointed to that area because I want more of that turquoise, but in a different way going on top. Now I'm gonna push that warm layer back. So forward, back. And this is, uh, this is just another approach in um, thinking about your layers. And I love this piece in the previous page. So um, giving it a little bit of a corner, relating it to that. Now I do end up, yeah. So I put it up higher because it needed some dark and it's nice to have a pattern up there. So now you'll see this develop more than an all over, then it becomes um, compositionally quadrants. So you want whatever size the quadrants are, there's four quadrants. And uh, Jane Davies uses this a lot. And that's where I first learned about these things. She's always talking about those compositions. And I, oh, I just love her work. Uh, if you haven't checked out her work, uh, all the different hearts and the heart shapes, shapes within shapes, oh, it's amazing. And, and then, uh, so intentionally at the beginning, you can think of this, start with black and white, start with different shapes, uh, a different shape, something going on differently in each 
uh, of the four sections. And that's what ends up happening here. So then I see it, see it develop, and then I go with that composition and try to re-emphasize it, uh, as you can see. So stay to the end. And uh, welcome. If you are new here, I think um, some more people are hopping on board, um, especially if you are searching under um, art journaling, abstract art journaling really is my tag. And, um, and I really love, I love that term because it's, it's, it's so fun. Now, doesn't work. Uh, too much of the same. Now, if I did a half circle and I did it in, say, the unbleached titanium or a lighter piece of paper, it definitely would have worked. But what's so great is it's good to know why things are working. And that's what we're learning um, <clears throat> as we go. So this random piece, I just stuck it there. Okay didn't want to lift it because it was already going to tear the paper underneath. Don't care because then I can uh, go around with the blue and I think that's what I end up doing. I change that shape into another smaller circle or two circles and sometimes you lose that really nice background that I said I liked but you know at least we made a note and to make it stronger next time. Now I don't know about I think the placement for this so now we've got quadrants happening as you can see so we've got a circle in the upper one a patterned rectangle shape organic shape um, the lower left hand quadrant is turquoise with some dark shapes and now we've got light so now we've got some interesting things guiding the viewers eye around the piece love that um, some more contrast there Remember, contrast guides the eye. Less contrast makes it subtle and interesting without interfering with whatever composition you're already using or maybe not noticing yet, right? So then I saw, okay, I love that shape, so I'm gonna emphasize that shape. And oh, yeah, there's where I wanna put a half of the circle. Love it. So then that area, yes. So it's it's not in the center, it's sort of in the upper center, but the square, yes. And so I'm adding, emphasizing that color and then a much larger shape occurs. And I really like that. Now, I don't know if I, oh yeah, I was thinking drips. I used to do so many drips in my paintings. I'm finding I'm not really doing that anymore. Uh, mostly because I'm art journaling and it's a little tricky. Um, I think the best way to have the best drips I've seen artists do is to not use water or just use just enough water on a nice paintbrush, uh, fil filbert or the pointy one, and um, holding enough of that um, paint in there and then pushing it exactly where you want that drip to go. So you can do one line of drips at a time. Now, I don't know, uh, this is the first time I think I've used acrylic inks in many different ways. I, I sort of went crazy with them because my tray on wheels is right on my left there out of camera. And I thought, oh yeah, let's use some drips and some inks. And I, they sit there and they really go a long way. So I went a little cuckoo with the it's like a raw umber. It's such an earthy. Now, put a little too much. Next time, what I'm going to do is use ink on top of a piece of paper like this. Roll it out to see if I like the pattern and then press it with the paper on top of the journal page. So I would do it backwards in this order, but that's okay. We don't care. So, oh man. I messed up my page. Well, not really, because um, what I will do, and, and right now it's just like, there's stuff all over this page. It's like, okay, let's, let's do, uh, so this is like an orangey, copperish color. 
So I'm just putting, because I, what I'm taking out is some of the, the colors in the collage pages and just giving it some unity. That's a turquoise, so I know I have turquoise, so let's have some turquoise ink. Oh, and then there's a spray bottle, and that didn't go very well. Oh, and then another dot from a previous, but that's okay, because I can just cover it up. So then I take my hair dryer, and uh, first I cover it up. There you go. Done. Gone. And then I thought, okay. So I'm going to dry that. going to dry it before I deal with it. So, I might leave some. It's gonna be there, it's gonna have a dark shadowy effect. Um, next time, always in hindsight, right? I might even go lighter with the colors that I chose, but <clears throat> I chose, oh, I chose to stay with the warm and stick with the mid-tone. But there is another piece of collage that I love with the same raw umber and the magenta, quinacridone magenta in it. So then I just cover up, there it is, and I just decide which way I want the patterns to go, horizontal or vertical. And this piece I know you've seen, it's so that needs to go in a much larger piece of canvas, which is coming up. There it is. I think that's the one. Yes, it is. Not sure. <laughs> so, yes. Mm, it may have worked and then added a stain on the top. Notice I don't want to cover that little rectangular piece. There it is. So. Why I chose this piece of collage is that it has that magenta going horizontally across, and I thought that will work definitely better, better than the other, which looked like I'm covering up something. You know what I mean? And I, di I didn't want that, so I'm just tearing the edges. Yes, 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 that's way better. Cleaning them, I want a nice crisp. Okay. That would have worked. I don't end up covering the whole corner, just a little bit, where most of that dark brown I put down. And leaving, yes, perfect. Okay, so that goes down. Ends up covering that dark piece, which I end up uh, veiling with a lighter tone anyway. So, and I remember watching uh, artists' videos over and over again to see, okay, they did this next. Why? Okay. Before I understood the layering process. So if any of you are in that stage, um, just keep practicing with different layers and it'll go, oh, okay. And then you'll build up your inventory of different, different kinds of layers and the different combinations and the effects that they make. So <clears throat> just knowing this, so I thought, okay, I'll add, it's such a beautiful, rich tone, that raw umber and quinacridone magenta. It's amazing. So I thought, okay, need to spread that around. We need some more darks. That's my dark right now, and so I'm going to use it. And I end up putting some turquoise horizontal lines along that little piece that I just added. Beautiful. Okay, so knowing that, when you when you know that this layer doesn't have to stay this way, but you're present and creating it at the time, it frees you up. It frees you up for allowing, okay, it's great, it's terrible, it doesn't matter. Because what am I gonna do next? If I don't like it, it'll be a very interesting underlayer. Wow, look at that magenta showing through now. Whoa. See how this takes a whole new... Um, first we started off with the turquoise, then we went into some light neutrals with ochre and unbleached titanium. And now, as you can see, the four quadrants are very different. So. 
I know I wanted something over to push it back. Those natural ones. I could have used the uh, hexagons. That would have been interesting too. But I like my lines. I like my zigzags. So I chose those. This would have worked as well. The circular one there. The geometric circles. So I thought, okay. To create unity in this piece, we need some some warm, ochre neutral tones up top, but they're much darker than that collage piece. And I don't know at this point, have I added all the gold? Yes, that gold ink, that metallic ink is so cool, but it's very, pro very strong, very potent. So now I'm really emphasizing the different quadrants and then bringing up the saturation in different areas. That's okay, but I think I go just a little lighter at the end. So I'm using pastels over acrylic. So if you haven't, try it. They're cheap, they're inexpensive. You can choose pastels that are very similar to the color that you're, you know, that's in the background so you can add subtle marks and oh the really fun way so <clears throat> knowing that I use the dots below and turquoise I just wanted something uh, just to push uh, those darker uh, blobs or the, the ink that I use that I overdid <laughs> yeah and notice this this journaling page is a lot longer because I just totally let go and forgot about time and here comes the pastels now this is a pinkish mauve this is a mauve a violet and really liking the contrasts and of course my my broken lines either uh, I use mostly vertical ones really liking that guiding the eye so now it's bringing that eye down I love how they contrast with the uh, turquoise in the middle there which seems like this art shape sort of happened. And I didn't even notice it until the end. And and that's 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 a good thing. Because in the end, oh, okay, look at that. So it's either going, you're gonna like it, keep it in, or you can go back and change it. I could have I could add turquoise to the right of it to make it more of a long rect rectilinear shape that sort of goes into that that neutral that ochre and then comes down there's so many ways you could have could deal with this all right so just trying to lighten up that push back those blobs really easy to do with pastel now to seal your pastel you just need to use a I use a gloss medium just the soft you don't need to use the heavy and you just go over each mark follow it with a brush that's wide enough um, I think you don't need to use gloss. I think you could do, it depends what finish you're, you're going to finish the piece with. And this is a journal page, so I'm not really worried. So, liking the turquoise, not really liking all of that dark. And this is now how this, this interesting shape occurred. I, you couldn't have planned it. I couldn't have planned it. And... I don't know uh, in the end that I like the location of it because it's right smack in the middle in, in a way, but that's okay. Um, and there's, there's my lines, so I'm bringing that turquoise. So we've got turquoise in each quadrant almost. Yes, we do. And uh, now the eye's moving around, different things. We've got loud conversation is the quadrants, the quiet conversation is the pastel, the marks collage pieces just adding a little more interest very interesting but wait I'm not done <laughs> I think I do this a couple of times that's why the video is long <laughs> longer it's not long I, I don't like to have my videos too long 30 minutes is great but let me know if I'm doing a large piece of course I'm gonna break it up into part one part two part three depending on depending on the completion of uh, 
the early stages, middle stages, and final stages. So, yes. So then I'm just, oh, that's right. That's why I did that with my hands. Now I'm adding, I'm quieting down. There we go. See, there's those. I'm quieting down some of the marks. You can do that after. And uh, wow, what a very different page than, than what I'm used to creating which is so great. So, start with something crazy. Maybe try these colors. They don't have to be exact, but you know, a deep red, a nice blue. Oh, so then I'm squaring, see when, you, when I'm squaring that off and meeting the line that's across, all of a sudden compositionally with that arc in the middle, you know what, it's sort of cool. I don't mind. Okay, so the big tape reveal, which tears the, the top, but I just re-glue it down with stick glue, yep. Yeah. So we need a little bit more heat here and then it comes off quite easily. So, wow. So what was our affirmation again? A positive creative energy flows through me. And I hope a positive creative energy flows through you as well. When you're having some time for yourself letting everything go, thinking of whatever positive affirmation, whatever positive intention while creating your art journal, your affirmation art journaling page. Very fun. I really enjoyed this. And this is the first time in one sitting that I created sort of an all over that really wasn't my color fields oh so i emphasize that now it did it did cover some of the nice little pieces of texture but you can see it more and you see how the eye goes up and really having fun with the pastels in this one um, there's some nice quality pastels that you can purchase on on amazon and and i'm not an affiliate um probably could be, plan to be, um, but there we go. Here it is, but not yet. I just want to leave these journal pages for you. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hop over to my Facebook group, and I will see you in the next video. A daily art practice that's good for the soul.